Hello Tyco world. So I'm gonna make this quick video just to show you guys how to use Fruko's little SV tool. So let's say you have a map like this map and you want to add SV, say on these nodes. Then you just open up this tool, like right here. It'll say select the OS file you wanna manage and usually it'll just open to this sorted by when you last uh, updated the file and so mine's right here sometimes it'll open up to like your documents or downloads so you just have to go to your file and then search for OS in the songs folder so just go ahead and open that up and you'll get this screen here and there'll be a lot of options and if it's a new map you won't have any of this crap it'll just have the BPM and this will be your first timing point so you have the program open but look at all these buttons, what do you do? Oh no... Well, let's just scroll to the beginning of where we want our speed up or slow down to begin. And we're going to press Control c to copy that time. Then, tab back to here, click this Add Inherited Points to Change SV Smoothly button. Click this button and copy the time, that's just the first time you want the SV to be at. So the first SV we can set it at 1.4 and we want it to slow down to 1.00 like that it has to be in this format because the comma is important because turkey and then copy the last time is when you want it to stop so we'll scroll to here because that's where i want it to stop Control c tab back and Control v to paste the last time in there target bpm this doesn't really matter, I've never used this, so then you can just click Add Inherited Points, this little status window will pop up, it'll say Remember to snap all the notes, uh, blah 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 blah, whatever And then it'll say the SV changes are added now They're not here yet, but that's because what the tool does is it creates a new copy of your OS um, file and then it replaces it So this is the old OS file that we were just editing, but if you go out and back in then they're there and you can play them so that's how you do a simple slowdown or a speed up and you can do that over any stretch of time like from here to here if you wanted to do like a 0.8 from 0.5 over like 20 seconds about then you can do that it doesn't matter but complex SVs like these you have to do by hand, I mean, this tool can't do that, so if you're here to learn how to do that, then I can't help you. <laughs> Not yet, at least. Anyways, let's go over some of the rest of these. So, position the notes, if you click that, it'll say, are you sure? Process complete. Every time you make a change, usually you'll have to exit, then go back in. One important thing to note is that if you make a change here, like say you position the notes and say, are you sure? Yes. And then you change something, it'll go like this. And it'll be like, do you want to save the changes? Now what you're saving here is what you just changed. So if you say yes, then the, the changes you just made will overwrite any changes you made in this program. Meaning if you added a speed up and then you moved one of the notes, and you click yes to this option, then the speed up will not be applied. So you always want to click no, pretty much. Uh, unless you unless the change you made was really important and you can't make it later or something. So select file, it just brings you to your songs folder, you can open a file, add hit sounds to folder. Is if you have any hit sounds, you can drag them in here and it'll play after you put one in there. And then you just click save and it'll add all the hit sounds to the file. Pretty simple. Set all whistle clowns to claps. This is if you're modding a map or if you have your own map and um, you only have whistle sounds because you clicked whistle to create K's instead of clap like an idiot. Usually since the default hit sound for whistle is really annoying, um, you'd want to change all those to clap so people don't get pissed off. Change the BPM of selected timing point. How you select points in here is like this. You don't just click one box or this or this or highlight this. You have to click this, this over here. So it highlights the whole thing. And that'll just change the BPM 
you can just do that in the editor though. Change offset of selected timing points, same thing, it just changes the offset, but you can do that in the timing panel, like right here. Equalize the SV for all timing points. Now this is a really good button. So if you have a variable timing map like this one, where it's just a ton of timing lines and they're all way different BPMs and way crazy 160 to 210 to 160 to 210, stuff like that, and you want all of them to be the same, so it plays like, so they're all the same speed, then you'll want to use this button. You have to choose a base BPM for all the notes to scroll at, so usually it's like 160 or 180 or whatever you think the song is, and then the SV, how fast you want the notes to go based on the BPM you entered, usually you just keep it at 1.0, and then type is add or edit. So I always do add because it's when you only have red lines, you only have what looks like this. So that's the easiest method is just to add and it'll get rid of all the green lines if you had any and then it'll apply new green lines to every single red line to make them all the same. Increase SB step by step of selected inherited points. So if you didn't already know, inherited points are green lines, timing points are uninherited points are red lines. So that basically, if you just select, once again on the far left, you just select all these, you can increase them step by step. Now it'll start with the first one you chose so if it was like 0.5 SV, and then you selected a bunch of 0.5s and you wanted the last one to end at like 0.75, you'd have to enter 0, 0,75, and then it'll do that. Change volume of selected points, once again something you can do in the timing panel. Increase volume step by step of selected rows. Once again, just like the increase SV step by step, you select the rows you want, and it'll go from 40% to the final one you selected and the last volume would be like 80 or whatever and then it'll increase step by step pretty self-explanatory increase or decrease SV of selected inherited points this is really nice if you have a speed up but it started off too fast or too slow and you want the whole thing to just go down a little bit let's say I wanted to change the 1.4 to 1.0 slow down here to 1.3 to 0 0.9 then that's a total of minus 0.1 right so you just select all these then you put in minus 0 0.10 apply yes and then it will just move all of those down 0.1 pretty much go back in here now it's 1.3 to 9.0. Alright, we're almost done. Delete selected inherited points, you know, select them, delete them. Now if you get this error, you have to you have to select only the rows of an inherited point. That means you selected a timing point like a dummy. So you can go back, delete them, whatever. Delete all inherited points. Eh. Delete duplicate timing and inherited points. Now sometimes when you're making changes, you want to do like a slowdown and then start a speed up on the note that the slowdown ended at the same SV. So if you go from 1.4 to 1.0, but then you want this to go from like 1.0 to like 1.5 ending here. And you do one function, 1.4 to 1.0 here using the add inherited points to change SV smoothly button. And then you do the same thing but speeding up, like from here to here. When you click this button, it will delete the double point, the 1.0 that's created here twice. That's really nice for when you're making things that speed up and slow down, like this map. Because as you can see, I have one, that speeds up, slows down here. It's like that. And then copy metadata to the selected files. Basically, it pulls up your metadata and then you can just copy it to all of your files. 
So if you run into an error like this, it's best to just do it by hand, because most of these things you can do by hand pretty easily. If you are trying to add SV and you get an error like that, um, like this, an unexpected whatever, then it's probably because your BPM is a decimal. Sometimes it glitches out and you get like a 0 0.0000001 difference. Like it'll be like, it'll be like this or some crap and it doesn't really like that. So I think that covers all of these functions. So hopefully uh, you know how to use the manage beat map tool and you can use it in your own maps. Thank you for watching and goodbye.